This is the flow, just a reminder, this is the flow that will actually enable us to take an attachments or a list of attachments in a list item and move it to another library, okay? Using this contractors list. So this contractors list is holding a list of all our contractors, um, what their start and end dates are, what their contract values are, what the duration of their value of their contract is. So what I'm going to do in this business scenario is I'm going to say that at some point, somebody needs to upload the contract to the um, list here. And they're going to do that as an attachment. They may also upload other things, like maybe they're uploading pictures during construction to this library, and then the pictures get moved somewhere else. Think about all the opportunities you have to use this in many different business scenarios. You can include if-then statements and things like that that enable you to distribute files for your user without them having to remember, where does that go? I'm going to just add an attachment so you can see that happen. But in order to do that, I have to kind of edit the form, and I'll show you why. When you use a standard SharePoint form, um, this attachment control is not the one that we're working with in customized forms. So we need to customize the form in order to put the attachment control on it. Um, and then at that point, we'll be able to do all this fun stuff that we're doing today. I'm going to pause this because I know my machine's being a little slow and I don't want you to have to wait. When you customize a form on SharePoint, it brings you back into the Power App Canvas. But the, the thing you'll notice when you get into the Canvas is this is different from a regular um, Create an App because it only has one screen, not three. And you have over here on the top left this thing called Back to SharePoint which shows that there's an integration with the list items specifically, all right? What item did they click on? What item did they edit? Which, you know, are they editing a new? So it's keeping track of the actual item versus an app that looking is looking at the whole list, so to speak, all right? Now, I don't need this, but this is a helpful way to get straight into the panel to edit your fields. I can just click on this first. It saves me a click or two. I think it actually might save me two clicks. And it opens up the data panel right away and I can get rid of what I don't want. So I'm going to get rid of all of these dates on the bottom because I don't need any of them. And I'm going to change this to being two reps. Um, and finally, I want to add the attachment control. That's why we came in here, right? So you have a has attachments, which is Boolean, just basically true or false. But I'm going to add the attachments control. Just that's all it says is attachments um, to the bottom of the form. So now that I'm done with my panel, I'm going to go ahead and span the contractor name across both. So I just grab that circle and pull it out. And I'm also going to span the attachment ac control across both. Now, this control itself allows me to, to indicate to my user what's the maximum number of attachment you can do. And I'm going to do two here because basically all I want is the contract and maybe the photo. I don't really want a lot of attachments on this list, um, so I can do two. Um, let's do three for fun. Let's say I, I allow them to add the contract. Um, amendment and a photo of some kind. So three at the most. And then I want to say the maximum file size is seven. And this is my way of controlling this list, making it sure it doesn't get too heavy. Um, because I expect that we're going to end up with, in the, over the next four to five years in our company, we're going to end up with somewhere around two to 3,000 contractors. And so I know the list is going to get big and I don't want you know this to get heavy. Now, the other thing is, as I move these files, right, so I'm actually copying them from here to there in many cases, um, I want to make sure that the files aren't too large to move or would cause some type of queuing in the back end or some such. So these huge files that get into the gigabytes can cause slowness in many different ways. So we give you these properties so you can control that your list don't get out of hand. But when you're making decisions about them, think about the type of data you're looking for. Think about what you want to recommend as a best practice to your users. 
and and think about the size of the list, how lo- how big it will get over time, and all of that will help you to make the, these decisions. Okay. Now I'm gonna um, because I'm only allowing three files, I'm gonna make this a little bit shorter, just to fit just three files, um, and then I'm also going to select the whole form and make it a little bit shorter because I actually will put a button on the bottom here, and so I want it to not have it too tall, right? So I have room for my button. Okay, and then I'm going to insert a button on the bottom, and this is going to be the button that's actually going to do the flow for us. Um, And so I'm just going to go towards the bottom here, make sure my form doesn't overlap it. It doesn't. And then make that button text bigger for older people like myself. Um, Remember, Veronica gave a really nice video on, you know, some best practices for app building. You don't want to make your text too small, especially if this is going to be on a mobile uh, view or something. You want to make sure that you keep things big enough for people to see. Just makes it life easier if you can read those little things on your on your screen, whether they be at the desktop or on your phone. Um, so I'm going to change this to move documents. Well, let's be literal here so that they understand. Move attachments to library, okay? They don't need to know what library it is, guys. This is what we do for a living, app makers. We make people not have to think too hard, right? Instead of telling them, okay, I want you to fill out this form and then go upload the document to this library if you're in marketing, this library over here if you're in sales, but if you're in, in, um, in, if you're in IT, I want you to put it in your OneDrive. Stop making people remember stuff. Why don't we do that as an app maker? We'll decide what library it goes to and in what condition, right? Perhaps something that they select up here will determine whether or not it goes into a specific library. Those kind of things we can do for our user, okay? Um, And we're going to get feedback back to tell them how to find that file later on. So that's the whole point of the respond to Power Apps action. We can get the feedback back and use it in an email message that sends them a link to the file, for instance. Although I'm going to keep it really simple today. Now, I don't want this button to show up unless there is an attachment. So here's where I can use that is attachments thing, right? Has attachments. Um, So I'm going to go into the visible property and I'm going to put here... And I'm actually going to use the integration. I could use the control name, but I'm going to use the integration because I want to make sure that file is saved. Because it is not until you save does the file actually get attached to the list item. So I want to make sure there's an attachment saved to this list item. So I'm going to use SharePoint integration. I'm going to say selected. And I'm going to say has attachments. You see that one right there? Equals true because this is Boolean, right? So that button just disappeared. And it disappeared because we don't have any attachments yet, right? But it will show up when there's attachments saved, okay? So that's the first thing I'm going to do. You can do a whole lot of things with that, right? You can decide who can move it and put that button visible only to those users, blah, blah, blah. There's just too many options, I tell you. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to SharePoint. Of course, I could change my display names and all that fun stuff that we normally do when we're making wonderful forms. But for the sake of this video, which is really all about the flow, I'm not going to go there. I'm going to keep it simple in case it brings you right back to your list. All right. So now that I'm in my list, let's try and attach something to this folder here, to this contract here. So I'm just going to click edit. Our new form should pop up. Once it pops up, now I'm going to try and use my attachment control. So I'm just going to do attach file. And then I'm going to go browse to my desktop where I think I have some sample files there for the contract. And here's this is contract A. So I'm just going to click on contract A and hit open. And that's going to attach that. Then I'm going to attach another file. And let's attach a picture. Let's imagine this is a picture of the contractor or his logo or something, right? Um, Now, remember I had a limit of two files? No, I had a limit of three, so I can do one more. I'm going to attach one more file, though. Let's attach, I know that one is kind of big. All right. 
and now I have three. And notice that now that I have three, I instantly get that message, max number of files reached. Again, that was my decision as an app maker. All right. And I can think of thousands of business scenarios where we don't want people just to upload all their files on their desktop. We just want the things that we're looking for. All right. So now that we've got three files saved, we're going to just hit save. So contract A, bullseye, and that deck. Let's go. Let's do it one more time. Just the way I can demonstrate this when we get ready to do the flow. I'm going to add the contract for contract B. And I think in this case, I'm just going to add a photo, another photo. So this little truck. Okay, we'll just add that little truck icon, right? Maybe that's his logo, all right? And then I'm going to save. I know you're all saying, why does she care about these little tiny things? I do. I really do. It's, it's really sad. Okay, so now that we're, we've got our attachment control working, our form is customized, let's do the flow. Those of you that fast forwarded, you can stop now. All right, so I'm going to actually go in and edit my, my form because I'm going to attach the flow to this button. Okay, so we're going to go customize. Notice the button didn't show up before when we didn't have any attachments. Okay. So we're back in our customized form. Since I don't need to add or remove fields and I don't need to learn more about customizing SharePoint forms, I'm just going to skip that and let's get right into the flow. So I'm going to click on the button, which has right now no on select property at all. It has a false in there. And I'm going to go to my action menu. And here's where it gets fun. I'm going to click on flows. Here we go. The data panel is going to open up because we're going to add flow as a data in this app, right? So I'm going to go down here and none of these apply. So I'm going to create a brand new flow. Now, I will say that when you start doing this regularly, you're going to get a long list of flows in that little list, right? And just to make it easier for you to get to the right flow, I suggest you rename your flows, but your flow buttons. Otherwise, you'll have 15 Power Apps buttons and you won't know the difference, right? So I'm going to call this Move File, or let's make it even easier. I'm going to call it File Move, okay? maybe a file attachment move. Something that's really easy to recognize in Power Apps when you're looking at that list, okay? And now that I have a name that I like, now I'm gonna make a new step here, and I'm gonna start by initializing a variable. And you're probably like, a variable? What do you need a variable for? Well, let me explain. The attachments that we are um, looking at right now. So we have to, that attachment control is a control that holds many items. No matter what they put in there, the potential of many items being in there is why I have to kind of get ready to store a variable array. And array is just another kind of codey geeky word for a group of things. So we're going to save a group of things in an array. But I need to set up or prepare a bucket to hold that group of things, okay? So just think of a bucket, a bucket, of, a bucket, an empty bucket, and then think of three golf balls, right? The bucket is actually the variable. Those three golf, golf balls, because they're together in a group, they are the array. And we want to get the golf balls into the bucket. So we have to prepare a bucket for that. Right, and we're gonna use an array, an array variable. We have to initialize that variable, get it ready to be used. We just went in the closet, we pulled out our bucket, and we put it somewhere close by that we can use it. Now, I'm gonna give it a name. I'm gonna call it file URLs. And usually when I'm naming uh, this kind of thing, I will kind of put an S to indicate that it's an array, it's an array. Because you can see there's more than one type of variable that we can initialize, but this is an array because it holds more than one thing, right? A group of things. And you can probably guess what group that we're talking about. We're talking about the group of attachments, right? So we're gonna set up this variable for the array, all right? That value. So we can leave it blank. It doesn't need to have anything in it. So now I'm gonna hit new step. And because 
I need to get a list of the attachments, right? I need to find out what attachments are attached to this. So I'm actually going to go into a action for SharePoint called get attachments. Okay. Um, my machine might be a little slow here waiting for it to catch up. As soon as it does, the search results will result in just one. Today, that's the only one that's get attachments, right? Now, I'm going to change the name of this, and I'm, I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to need to ask Power Apps things, and I want to make this name clear to me in Power Apps, right? So I'm actually going to rename this get attach list because what it is is getting me a list of the attachments. Now, if you're teaching someone flow, you might not want to rename that so they can remember what action that is, but I make it a habit to rename it get attached list to keep my parameter really clear. All right? Now I'm going to go and uh, get the site address. So this is the site address of your list that they're that they're submitting to. And I'm going to go into the contractors list. And then I need the ID of the list item that they're submitting or that they're on right now. What, what list item are they looking at right this minute? And there's no way for Flo to be able to figure that out at this point. So I'm going to say ask in Power Apps. Now you're going to see when I click ask in Power Apps why I changed that list, that action name. As soon as I click action, at, uh, action in, ask in Power Apps, and every time I click that button, it gives me a dynamic feel that is prefixed with the action name. I wanted that to be nice, short, sweet, and easy to, to understand. This is the list item ID where the attachments are, right? Or the list of attachments on the ID of the list, right? Okay, so... Power Apps, I'm going to pass that ID just using the SharePoint integration, which you'll see, right? Now that I have the list of attachments, I shouldn't get excited because, again, I need to get a lot of information about these attachments. Well, not a lot, but, it's a, you know, I need to get the path. I need to get the stuff about this attachment. So I need to start an array process. I'm going to click on the More button, and I'm going to get an Apply to each, all right? So add and apply to each. And all this means is everything I do in this block right here called apply to each will apply to each attachment that it found in the get attachment list. Okay, action. So I'm going to click on that. And now I want to, what do I want to use as the body of this apply to each? Well, what I got out of get attachment list. And you can see get attachment list right here. I want that body. There's only going to be one parameter, one um, output of this action, and it's going to be body. So I'm not ready to use the variable yet. I don't need to ask Power Apps this. I know that I want the body of that. Okay. Now let's get busy doing stuff. Now here's the funny thing that I always forget. Even though we have the list of attachments. In the previous um, action, we don't actually have the attachment, the actual file, right? We don't have it. And, and, and we call that content, right? We don't have the content. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an action. And I'm going to say here, um, get attachment content. You'll see there is, just like there's a get attachments action, which is what we used above, there's a get attachment content. How many people miss this? Raise your hand. I'm, my hand is up. Both of them are up. I always forget about this. But get that because that's what's going to get the actual file, right? You can't move anything if you don't have the file. I'm going to go in here and we're going to choose our site address. Again, it's the same site address in this case because we're just going from the, from the uh, contractor list, attachment list to the contractor attachment itself, right? The list name is contractors, the ID, and it says it right there for you. ID of the list item the file is attached to, all right, which should be this field right here. Why I don't have it available to me down there, I'm not sure. It usually should be available. Um, and so let's try again. I want that ID 
and it's not giving it to me. So um, normally, whenever you're using the same number or the same ID, I, I suggest you keep reusing the ID. But if you don't see it, like you can't find that again, you can click again, right? Um, and sometimes what I'll do is make sure I rename this so it so that it's clear to me what this is. So get attach content list file file. So this is the get attach content. Um, and then that helps me remember because you'll notice when I click on this again, it's going to prefix it with the name of that control. And this is still the ID. So this dynamic field and this dynamic field are unfortunately the same. I had to do it twice, but I'll remember that when I get into my, um, my, my actual power app. Okay. Good to note. But if you can see this dynamic field, then you should reuse it. All right. Cause this ID is not different from that ID. All right. Then it wants the ID of the file, right? The file identifier, the actual attachment identifier. And you'll get that back from this action. You'll see it listed under get attach list. And it actually says under it file identifier so that you can be confident that that's what you want to get right there. All right. So now that action results in you having hands on the file. And let's go ahead and take this file now that we've got it and move it into the library. So I'm going to add an action. And in this case, we're actually copying. We're not moving, but I'm not going to use the copy action in this case, not with an array. OK, so if I was doing a single file, I might be able to use copy without an issue. But because of the array, I'm going to use create file. So I'm going to type create file. And this will bring us down to the list of actions in SharePoint that enable us to create a file. All right. Again, I'm going to pick the site address because now it's asking me, where do you want this file to go? Because it's a, a library, I, I'm going to get the folder path. So I decided I was going to move these into uh, flow docs. The file name, let's go ahead and keep the file name that exists right now. So the get attach list action is what got us the display name. So I can go ahead and use that again. And then on the file content, I want to use what I used up. I want to get from what's up here, right? Get attach content, right? And then you'll see under that action right here, I have the attachment content. So the, in this section called get attach content, which is what I named it. It gives me the attachment content, the content of the attachment, and that's the file. So we've literally, in this case, we're picking up the ball and we're putting it into a folder, a file folder. We haven't yet put it into the bucket, which is the variable, which we'll go back to in a few minutes. Okay, so now we have the file and we've we've copied it over to the uh, FlowDocs library. But you know what? I also want to get some properties out of this new file, um, such as in my case, I want to get the URL of this file. So I need to get the file properties that has been created. So I'm going to add an action and I'm going to call this get file properties. So get file properties. But you can see that you can type get properties and you'll still get it back. And then I'm going to do my site address again, which is the same site, right? The same site I've been working from all along. The nice thing about that is this whole flow could be passing files around to different sites, right? We could add switch cases. In some cases, it might go to that site. In some cases, it might go to the other site. We can do a number of things here. Um, I'm going to go to the library. I want to pick, which is uh, flow doc. What document do I want the properties of? Well, the, the one that we created. So if I go to the create file, I see that the, um, 
item ID is right here. And I love the way, again, Flow gives us help. It says the value that can be used to get or update file properties in libraries. Isn't that cool? So it makes it easy for us to be sure that we've got the right thing. All right. Now, what do I want out of those properties is really the link to the item. So I'm going to add an, I, an action to pull that link to item out into our variable, right? So I need an action that will append that link to our array variable. Okay, so I'm going to click on click an action, and then I'm going to um, click in here and type append to array. And you'll see that we have a special operation that's going to show up in a second called variables append to an array variable. Now I know you're saying to yourself, hey, we made an array variable. We sure did. And we needed to have made that array variable before, before we can use this action, right? And we did that, if you don't remember, way in the beginning. We have to make sure that the initialized variable is an array variable because there are several types of variables, all right? So if it is an array variable, when we add this action, it will be selectable in these choices. Feel free to initialize more than one array variable that you might use in a different way, all right? And then what I want to put in here is that path to this item from this properties, right? So I'm gonna go to get file properties. You don't see anything right here by default, but that's okay. Click see more. And now you get all your file properties right there. Okay. And what I want to pull out of here is the link to item. It says link that can be used to get to the file or list item it is only people with permissions to the item will be able to open the link. And this is a reminder to you to make sure if you give people a link to something that you also give them rights to read that something in the library. Okay. So thank you for reminding me to do that flow. All right, let's go to the next thing, which is, I think I've got everything I need. I've got that file moved over there. I'm happy. Of course, you can get as many properties as you want, whatever you need out of this, this iteration, get it out. But, right. Before I leave out of here, I want to actually delete that item. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and click on add an action and delete attachment is the action I'm going to search for, which will filter down to SharePoint delete attachment. If I just, there it is. I want to add that. All right. I'm going to go ahead and tell it again, the site and the list name. Cause again, like I said, this could be changing all through this flow. Um, I'm going to actually, uh, what it wants here, and it tells you ID of the list item, the file is attached to. Okay. So once again, I want to use that get attach that, that, that did get attached content ID. In this case, I see that second one. So I'm going to just reuse it. Reuse dynamic fields whenever you can. That was storing the list item ID that the files are attached to. So I'm going to go ahead and use that again, as opposed to clicking in X and power apps and, and getting a third parameter. All right. Now, what is the file identifier? We go back. Where did we get the attachments? We got it in the get attached list here. And notice that we have one that's called file identifier. Makes it easy. Let's click that and put that in there. So now it knows what to delete. Now, before I leave out of here, you remember I said that I wanted to create a relationship between my list items and the document library. So I added a new field into my document library called ref ID. That's where I'm going to put the list item ID so that I can query my document library for all files related to each list item. So before I leave this loop, I want to make sure we update the file properties of that new item we just created in the library with the ref ID of the original form. Okay, so I'm going to hit add a line action. And as soon as I do that, which I notice sometimes I have to click twice, just click until you see this search. 
I'm going to type update file properties. You want to make sure you do this within the apply to each. Okay. Update file properties. Okay. I'm going to scroll down a little bit and choose update file properties. And now, uh, again, it's asking me where, right? So I, I give them the site. Now we're talking about the library now. So not the list, the library. I want the library to have a reference to the original list item ID. So I need to point it to the file ID first, right? Get file properties, right? Use this valuable value for specifying the item to act on. So that's this one. And then the title, I'm going to actually fill in the title. Do you know how frustrating it's been for me in the past when people fill in the name of their file, but they don't fill in the title? I don't think a lot of people understand the value of the title field, but it's really important for search and discovery but nobody fills it out. They kind of just name their file and they don't really fill out their title. So I'm going to do that for them, right? I'm going to use the display name of the attachment today as the title for the, the, the file in the library. And then I'm going to add the ref ID, which is the ID of the actual file, I mean, of the uh, list item. So I might have to click it again. And I noticed that this can happen occasionally in flow where sometimes you get a property that shows up and then somehow it disappears. But I want this right here. And for some reason, I can't get it here. So if I can't get it in there, which is I really wish I could drag it in there, right? <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'm just going to ask in Power Ups. So what happens now is um, I will have three parameters to fill in, but they are exactly the same. Okay, they are exactly the same. In each case, I have to click X in Power Apps for the ID that I'm of the list item. So this will be easy for me to do. All right, so now I've done everything I needed to do to these files. They're all set and ready to go. And I'm going to get out of the apply to each now because now I'm ready to go and uh, get busy doing my last couple of things. The first thing I want to do is join those appended variables. So all of these um, append to array variable, they're actually, um, I need to get them to be joined in some way so that I can split them up. So all of my um, links, all of my paths to the file, I want to be able to split them up in Power Apps. All right. So I'm going to choose a join operation. So you can just type join. I think there's only one. It's a data operation. Um, so we can scroll down. Data operation. Give it a minute. And there it is. Data operation join. Join is really smart. It knows that you want to join something into a variable. So um, it's going to give us the variables that are available here on the right. So from this variable, that's the one we kept appending the file name into. I want to join it, though, with something that I can split, right? So I'm going to use a caret. Um, you want to use a character that is not feasibly in your path, right? So in this case, I could have used like a question mark. But in some cases, you can't use a question mark if your paths in contain a query string, right? So just try and use something that you know won't be in the path. And to me, caret is never in the path, all right? So then now that I've got them joined together, so they become one string now, one long string of paths, each one separated by the character I put here, which is totally up to me, which is, but what is a caret. Now I'm going to take that value and give it back to Power Apps. I'm going to use our brand new action, which I love it. It's called respond to Power Apps. I don't think there's anything that has made me more happy in flow that respond to Power Apps, and you can probably figure out why. So I'm just going to look for that. Give it a second to find it. Respond to Power Apps, okay? 
Now I could type out Power Apps, it probably would have given me less choices there. And now I'm going to add an output. Huh, you know what's going on that I just noticed? I didn't get out of this apply to each. So let's drag these out. Pretty sure I can just drag them out. So I think I can drag this below this. There it is, dragged out, and drag this below that. So whenever you make a mistake and you put things in this apply to each that need to be outside, you can easily drag them out. And in this case, it is really important that they sit outside of the apply to each because otherwise they'll apply to each and we don't want them to apply to each. You want them to be, you know, kind of like a composite thing, right? So I'm going to call this string URLs. And what am I going to put in there? The result of my join, which is an output, okay? And this is the output that will come back to Power Apps. And notice I've called it string URLs. All right. Um, and now I'm going to think if there's anything else I want to do. I don't think so. There are our, That's our flow in the nice composite neat steps. These are the steps you need to take. I'm going to head, go ahead and save. I named it file attach move and I'm going to save. Now, I was talking a lot. If I wasn't talking, that would have been really fast to do. But, you know, I was talking. So just remember that the, the time it took me to talk to you about it is a whole lot longer than the time it would take you to do it, right? So now we're going to go back to our app. I have a great session that's persistent, and the new flow I just made is at the bottom. I'm going to click on it. That's going to add it to that it, to the to the app as well as associate it to this button. And it's going to remind me, complete the parameters in the formula bar. And it opens up the formula bar for me. So I'm going to click in there and fill it out. You can see there's three things it wants. And we already talked about these three things. But I decided basically what these three things are. So that's why I know what they are. If you were going to give this app to somebody else, you might actually want to document or share that flow with them um, and share that flow with them. So document what your parameters mean. In this case, I'm going to do SharePoint integration. And I'm going to get the selected ID because in, in all of these cases, it's the list ID that the parameter wants. And then I'm just going to copy that. Control C and paste it two more times. Notice I took the comma too. And then I'm going to close paren. So that I end up with this. And if we click right after your first paren, you, it needs three parameters. I already talked to you about the fact that all three of them are asking for the same exact thing, which is the list item ID. Whenever possible, though, try to reuse IDs in Flow so that you only have to give that pass that once, right? All right, so now that I have that working, if I were to stop right here, this would go and move those files for me. But I want it to give me back the, um, the URLs. I want that back again. So I'm going to create a variable out of this action that's going to hold the response. So I'm going to click in front of file and type set. And then what am I going to set this to? Uh, my URLs. And then at the end here, I'm just going to close that function set. So that second paren is for the set function. And now this variable right here holds all the responses. So in this case, I only have one response. But if you had a thousand responses, all of them would be sitting inside of that response variable. Okay. So let's go ahead and use that variable on this form. So I'm going to, um, where can I put this? Let's do a gallery. So I'm going to insert a gallery here, uh, just a blank vertical gallery. And I might put this on the second screen, but I just want to get this done. Basically, I'm only allowing three items. OK. Um, and I might actually, there's a bunch of stuff that I might do. You know how I think, right? Um, I'm going to move this whole form up. I'm going to move this up and then move this up. Okay. Uh, I'm noticing that this is getting cut off. So I'll move that down a little bit. 
so that that doesn't get cut off. Okay, and now um, basically I'm going to put in here uh, that uh, that uh, array. So I'm going to use a split function to split up my URLs. I'm going to click a dot, and this shows me every parameter coming from flow. In this case, I'm going to take the only one that we have, which is string URLs. I'm going to split that by the caret, which is with the six, so it's a shift six. Um, and now I'm going to click on this label here, and I might not use a label. Instead of using a label, you know what I'm going to use in here? I'm going to use an icon. So I'm going to delete the label, and I'm going to use an icon here. I think that's what I did before. All right, so I'm going to click on my gallery, click the little icon here, and then insert a icon that looks like a document. We have a couple of them. Uh, okay, and then on this icon document, I'm going to put an on select statement that will launch the file. So launch this item dot result. Okay which will launch the URL of this item, because that's all that's in that gallery, is the URL of the, of the file. Okay, I might also want to move this. Let's just do the same thing we were doing before. Let's just align left and align top. Make this smaller. And again, what it looks like, and I probably should rename it, blah, 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 blah. Okay, and at that point, we're going to make the visibility of this opposite this, but first I want to give the feedback back to the user on how many items they actually returned. Um, so I'm going to do a text, I mean a label. Now I could have actually counted the carrots in the split as well, but I've decided to use the gallery. So I'm going to say gallery one dot all items. And all I'm doing here is wrapping this in a count rows. Okay, so count rows, gallery all items will give us back how many how many things they actually uploaded. All right. Now before I see that, I just want to see where this is. I'm going to Control X and just put high because I just don't have an answer yet. And the reason is we don't have at this point in time. We have not pressed the button, and so we have no return value right now. So that's why I just kind of put the high so I can see it. Um, and then what I'm going to put is, and then, I'm sorry, files uploaded. Files uploaded. And then I'll just put a space before that and put our count rows before that. So see if you can understand what I'm saying here. Okay, see if you can understand what I'm saying here. I'm pasting that count rows here. And basically I'm concatenating um, the number of files uh, uploaded with the text files uploaded so that they can see how many files they uploaded. And then this is going to be the list of the icons of the files so that they can click on it and open it, okay? Um, and since I only have three documents, I'm only making that big enough to fit three. Now, what I might do for the visibility of this is um, only show this when this button is not visible. So if I go to the visible property of this button, and then after I go to the visible property of the button, I'm going to select this. And then I'm going to do the opposite here. So I'm going to select files uploaded and this little button right here, this little gallery right here. So I can use my control key to select them both and then set their visible property to 
the opposite of the button. So I'm going to go in here and paste and make this false. Okay, so now they show when the button doesn't show. Now that's important because the button is going to move the files, but once they're moved, right, now we don't want to show that, right? Now one thing I'm going to add to the back of that button is a refresh, right? So on the on select, I now have that set statement there. So I'm going to go in here and on select. We have that set statement. I'm going to add at the end of it refresh because I want to refresh this data. So refresh, and then I want the data contractors to refresh. All right. That makes sure that, you know, we see what's fresh and new. All right. So now we're going to go back to SharePoint and say, save and publish. This is where the rubber hits the road, right? When we get all done doing our magic, does it work? Okay, so I'm going to refresh this screen. I'm just going to go in there and edit this. I would you see that? Oh, hey, wait a minute. I added a new button and I don't see it here. And I know I click saved and publish. Then what you want to do is go into your browser settings, you in your settings. You want to go in to choose what to clear if you're an edge or whatever browser you're in. Go and clear your cache data. And what this helps with is that it doesn't cache your previous form so that you're looking at the old form instead of the new form. All right. Um, so um, here's the form. It's like I'm looking. Nope, because I remember I made that taller so we could see max number of files. So nothing's cached. Now I'm going to click move attachments to library. There's three attachments, and if you look behind here at the list, you see the attachment icon on number two. This is item number two. Okay, so now that our file, our form is open, let's go ahead and try our flow. So I'm going to click Move Attachments to Library. You'll see the little ants revolving at the top of the form here. And that's the work in progress kind of indicator. And now you can see that we've got the button is gone now because there's nothing in attachments anymore. And it lets you know you've got two files uploaded. So if I click on one of these files, there's the logo. I don't know if you can see that it opened up the logo there, the little logo. Um, what else did I attach to there? Let's go back again. Uh, you can click and try them and they work. Okay, nothing to worry about. They work. Here's our contract. Okay, and I'm going to go to the Flow Docs library, and I do have to refresh that page for that attachment to disappear, and just refresh, and then you see that we've got two files. And again, I think it's my machine that's being slow, but both of these files are connected to Ref ID number two. Um, and this is where we're going to do our last thing, which is to make the gallery that shows these files. So I'm going to go back to go back to that form and add a gallery to the second page. All right. So that you can actually get a list of the uh, documents. So notice there are no attachments here um, except for number one. We did number two and it took the attachment off of the folder of the situation. All right. Now let's add a gallery that lets you look at the files in more detail. So I'm going to click here and do edit. And we're going to do that last change to the form and it's done. So this video is a little long, but I, we did a lot. You know, we customized our form so we'd have a button and an attachment control. Then we made the flow. Um, then after we made the flow, we came back to Power Apps and just made the place where we would give that information back to our user. And then after we validated that that flow uploaded the files, the last thing we're going to do is just provide a gallery in this um, form for people to go and look at all the files associated with this particular list item. So that's quite a bit of stuff, and I probably should have done it in part one, part two, part three, but I know that most of the people who have asked me to do this flow are on the intermediate level, and they can handle 
But remember, hold on to this video and look at the parts that interest you the most and you'll be fine. All right. So after the form opened up, uh, what I did was I went ahead and um, clicked on customize. So I had you paused while it was loading the form. And then after the form opened, I clicked on customize because we need to go back and customize a little bit further. We're going to add that gallery. So I'm going to skip this and I'm just going to insert a little icon somewhere um, to get us to the file list. All right. So I'm going to go to my icons and I'm going to look for something interesting. Maybe, maybe we'll use this little hamburger menu. It really doesn't matter what you use, but I'm going to have this go to the uh, list of files, right? And so I'm just going to put that right there. Uh, that's a good place to put it in my mind for this time being. You know, again, I'm not trying to design a beautiful form. I'm trying to show you how, the, how I think through these things. I'm going to add a tool tip here called uh, C files, which basically will show the files that are already uploaded. And this is going to navigate to a different screen. So I'm going to actually insert a screen. Did you know that even though you're customizing a form, you can still have more than one screen? All right. So I'm going to go ahead and use a list screen because it gives me the most value. And I'm going to rename this file screen. All right. So this is going to be where I'm going to show the files. So I'm going to rename this, call this the files screen. I don't like this color up here, so I'm going to make it black. So I'm just going to make this rectangle black. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, because the text is black, I'm going to make it gray. All right. And then I'm going to change the title of it to related files. And then I'm going to set this to the document library. So let me show you how I do that. First, I'm going to add the library as a data source. Flow has it, but Power Apps doesn't have it yet. Okay. Did you know you can add a library as a data source? Watch me. So I'm going to scroll down and connect uh, SharePoint. So I can use the same connector I used before, uh, which it did for me, you know. So I, don't, I, I try not to have multiple connections of the same thing in the same environment. One day we'll talk about that. Okay, so I'm choosing that site. And then I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom to this blank box here and type documents. No, I'm going to flow docs. It's important that you type it exactly. And this is one of the reasons why I said I wouldn't suggest you use spaces in this because you really want this name to stay the same. Don't change this name later on after this app is started because the app will look for the, for the library according to that name. And I'm going to connect. And now I can connect that to this gallery here. So I'm going to uh, click on the gallery and change this uh, data source from the sample that we give you to flow docs. And then I'm also going to change the layout of the gallery to be just title. I can, of course I could do as many. So let's do do title and subtitle so you can do the author's name. Okay. So let's do title and subtitle. And let's change the title to the name of the file. Now I'm safe with using the title of the file as well. You know why? Because in Flow I set it, right? I didn't count on my users to set the file name for me. I set it in Flow. So I could use title there. Um, but actually I'm going to use um, the name. And then for the subtitle, I'm going to use the author's name. So that's not going to be here because it's a complex field. I could use the modified date if I want to. Well, let's use that. That way I can sort by modified. Let's use that. If I wanted to use the person, I would come in here and instead of modified here, I would type author. Sorry, I hit the wrong mouse button. I would type author and then I would hit a dot and then I would get the display name of the author. So that's the way I would put the author's name. But I decided that I think I want to sort by the modified. So I'm going to use that instead. Okay, and then I'm going to go into my uh, gallery again and change the items property so that I sort, right? Because right now we're not sorting. So I'm going to sort, sort 
by columns. And I'm going to use the modified column to sort. Um, and that's it. I don't actually need a search. Now, what if I want them to be able to click on this file to open it? I'm just going to use a launch statement on the label. So I will go to my on select. And I don't need to use the return value from flow because basically the document library has the link to the item. So I can do this item link or I can do this, I can do link, this item dot link. See that first one? And now it will open the file from that button. And I'll just make this bold, bold, bold. Maybe that will indicate to them that that's a link. I might actually, you know, that, that underscore. Okay, looks. Save and publish. We are done, peeps. We are totally done. But let's test this one out and see how it works. And then I will say this you can consider to be the equivalent of like two Friday function videos because it's kind of long. I'm sorry. Back up or fast forward whenever you need to get to what you need most. But someone who's brand new should be able to watch this video and do this end to end. Um, link to the screen that has the new gallery. I forgot to do that. So I'm not going to let you watch that. I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we'll come back and do the rest. So what I did was I went in and I moved my little icon up a little bit higher. I also changed it to a red just to draw your attention to it. I probably should hide this zero files uploaded um, it as well if nothing is in the attachment area. But right now I'm going to just go ahead and click this and you'll see that it pulls up my related files. And if I click on a related file name, it will open the file in the browser. Okay. In this case, it's going to open it in Word Online. All right. Now I'm going to go back and just um, point out that right now there are only two items in that library. So it returned back both of them. We need to do one last thing and then we're done. We need to filter that gallery so that it only returns back ref ID number two. And so the first thing I'm going to do is move another file in here so you can see it with a different ref ID. Click on contractors and then I'm going to move the files that are attached to contract A um, first. So I'm going to go ahead and click this and then click edit. And since my machine is being a little slow, I'm going to actually pause and let that open. Okay, now that it's open, I'm going to go ahead and move the attachments to the library. Notice that now I'm in number one. So I'm going to move them to the library. And there's three attachments in this case. This is all for contractor A. And then there's our response from flow. Okay. Now, the only problem is this worked really well, and these will open up those attachments and not the ones uh, from the other file. But we need to get that gallery filter, right? So that gallery is the last thing we need to filter. So I'm going to hit customize, and I'll be right back. So now we're going to actually filter the gallery so that we're sure it only returns the files for this list item, okay? Because you'll see it'll return them all. Okay. So let's wait for this to, to do its thing. Okay. I'm going to skip this. I'm going to go straight to the file screen and you'll see it's showing all the files instead of just the three for this item or whatever. Right? So I'm going to highlight the gallery and I'm going to add a filter to this. Okay. So I'm going to, The source is what I want to filter. So I want to filter this source, which is flow docs, where the ref ID equals SharePoint integration, which always gives me the current items data selected 
dot id. And now uh, this, and I need to close my paren. And now this will filter that gallery for only the records that apply to it. So don't forget to do that.